Do you remember those times that you wanted to have your 3D object into your photograph of whatever you had and trying to match the, you know, the, the, the floor plane that you've created to match with the, with the background of the photo image? Um, it was always a pain because, you, you know, you, wanted, you, you needed the floor because you needed to have the um, shadows casted from your 3D object so that it's a complete, you know, perfect match in the composite that you want. And uh, you're always trying to to match the floor, not transparent enough, transparent enough, or use negative lights. Well, those days are gone. Lightwave 11 comes with a complete new note, which is called the Shadow Caster, and um, it's I, I I kind of love it. I'm I'm missing some features, but nevertheless, new tech, great job. Um, for those who have seen it from the manual. Um, I'm just going to take it a little bit, just a step further, just to show you what you can do with that. Okay. Um, first thing I'm going to do is going to drop into the image editor. I'm going to load up uh, the image that we're going to be using um, for this tutorial. Okay. Um, this is actually my house, believe it or not, um, when it was built in 2000. Um, so we're going to be using this, um, setting up some stuff first. So I'm going to go to Windows. And this is all in the manual as well. So I'm just right now. I'm just following the steps that are in the manual because they're uh, logical steps. So I'm going to um, compositing options, uh, choose the background image. Uh, then I'll go to backdrop. I'll add an uh, image world environment, and I'll use the same image. That's for the object. In this case, I'm going to just simply put in a chair, a really bad chair, but <laughs> which which is not going to be looking realistic. But you know, at least the lighting will. Uh, kind of match. Next I'm going to be setting up the camera and I'm going to do this it, exactly the same as in the manual. So I'm going to choose a real lens camera and I'm going to say here that I want, I want it from the image and if your image has the metadata in it, um, Lightwave can use that to read what kind of camera has been used. Um, as in the manual, do not use f-stop. That's simply because otherwise it's going to be using um, um, focal length and stuff like that. Well, focal length, yeah, but well, I'll, sh I'll show you in a sec. I'm gonna say okay, okay. Um, I'll set up some little, little bit of um, anti aliasing anti anti -aliasing, or oversampling just to get that realistic, or not realistic, but that old kind of light wave render that I kind of love. Um, well, actually the depth of field. If we would have gone into the um, camera options just now and said read from uh, from image or read from image, and I didn't turn that off, this would have been set on and uh, your uh, object would most likely be blurred. So just turning that off. While I'm in here, I'm going to say um, uh, these are just fine. Global illumination, we're going to enable that as well and um, lights if you use global illumination just leave this at one or two percent and I'm gonna use a distant light because in this case it kind of mimics the flash that has been used within the uh, that was on top of the camera okay D for display options and instead of camera view background blank I'm gonna say that I want the background image and there we have it and the camera is now already matching uh, the camera that was used to take this picture an old codec camera. Okay, um, right. As was in the manual, modular, modular tools, geometry, ground plane. I'm gonna leave this as it is. Except I'm gonna call this the floor, and I'm gonna say okay. Um, camera, T for move, and let's move that up a bit. And there we have our ground plane. Now, what I want to do is I want to match that ground plane with this area of the floor. So I'm going to choose Y for rotate and rotate that camera a little bit. It's a bit sensitive, but T for move. Let's move that a bit. And Y for rotate just a little bit more. T for move. I think this will do the trick. Okay, so we've got a, our ground plane there. Next thing we're going to do is load up <coughs> an image. So let's take uh, a chair. Okay, it's a bit small, so Shift H and size that up so that it's a big chair, a little bit 
too big perhaps but a big chair y for rotate and let's rotate rotate that just a little bit okay next thing we need to do is we need to <coughs> line up that distant light with the camera because you know the light the flash as you can see in the window is on top of the camera so I'm going to go to display options I'm going to use a quad view to do that I'm going to move that light just so that it's near the camera and oops wrong one and on top of the camera a bit to the right and you know a distant light it doesn't matter where its position is its rotation is what matters but just you know so you get the good feeling why for rotate and let's kind of match the angle the camera is taking T for mo I'm, I'm being picky a little bit right now but you know I think this uh, Y for rotate let's move it just a little bit like this okay this is kind of looking okay all right so the light has been set up we've got an object we've got the ground floor let's um, turn on the VPR let's see what what it looks like that's look that's not looking too bad um, okay, so you can see the shadows already on the floor, which are going that in that direction. But of course, we've got that weird plane there. So there, that's where the shadow caster comes in. So I'm going to choose this. I'm probably going to call just call this the floor. Floor. I'm going to check the edit nodes. Click on edit nodes. Go into materials. Oops. Shadow caster. Double click that. Not going to do much here. Just material into material. And a lot of work has been saved. As you can see, we've got the, um, the the plane is now kind of transparent. Turn that off. Let's um, do that now. Um, so we got the uh, the shadows on the floor. We got the 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 chair kind of well lit, as if it's been lit by the by the flash. You can see it a little bit on the corner of the chair there um, but you know the shadows just end where the plane ends and there's nothing on the wall so how do we address that uh, not that difficult doing the same steps again so I'm gonna create a new ground plane I'm just gonna call this a wall okay okay I've got rotation set already press the Y if you haven't and I'm just gonna make sure that this is actually a wall which is standing up there you have it okay I'm gonna move this back and how far do you need to move that back well if you have the chair here and if you look at that image it's well, what would it be half a meter so just it doesn't really matter that much except that the shadows will be longer or further away so I'm just gonna use it like like so okay so this is going to be the distance of the wall from the chair um, and the rest that's pretty easy I'm gonna so they've got the new ground plane I thought I renamed that actually rename so floor so I'm just gonna say set that to rename all right because it's the um, sorry it's the name of the wall this is kind of messed up, isn't it? You got a buggy surface editor. Okay, so it's not renaming that wall. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. This isn't the wall. Rename. This is the floor. I think there is a bug in there. Floor wall. That's weird. Okay, copy this floor and paste it onto the wall. And as you can see now, the shadow is actually being cast onto the wall as well and the radiator that is in front of it. And that gives us the next problem. Um, the radio, radiator is in front or is on top of the wall, but the shadows, it's just like it's a big flat plane. Okay, so how do we address that? Well, we do the same steps again. I'm going to create another ground plane and I'm going to call this, well, let's call this heating okay so it's on the floor again down there um, and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna just 
rotate this. Why? I'm going to set that straight up. T for move. And let's move that. Oops. Let's move that just in front of the wall. Check here. That's a bit too far from the wall. So let's move that just a little bit more to, whoa, 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 to the wall, like so. Okay. Now we need to press the H key and stretch this and actually have this plane the same size as the radiator is. Okay. So the width should be a little bit less. Let's check this. T for move. Let's move this little sucker up. That's kind of looking okay. A little bit to the right. Okay, that's kind of matching the radiator, isn't it? So I'm going to surface editor and I'm going to go to that heating. I'm going to just paste again the surface on top of that. And as you notice now, you actually have the shadow casting on the floor, then on the wall, oops, then on the radiator and then back on the wall. So now you have some really pretty realistic um, shadows going on there. Um, one thing that you need to take notice of is that if I go into the lights and go into the properties, um, if I turn down the light to about 5%, you notice that the object is getting really dark, but the shadows are, being, um, are exactly the same. So you need to keep notice of that. Th that's something, you know, we need some more control within the actual um, node editor, surface editor, and we'll go into the heating. That's the wall heating. So we need some additional controls down here because now it basically does a reflection in the shadows, but there's not much more that we can control. And um, but nevertheless, great job, new tech. And um, let's make this a little bit more realistic. So give this um, a 5% shadow. Well, in this case, perhaps a 10% reflection, I mean, sorry. So now the chair is being reflected into the radiator as well, as if the radiator is uh, a reflective, um, has a reflective surface, which, you know, helps creating realistic images. So render. Render frame. Let's have a look how this uh, how this how this turned out. So there's no working with negative lights and no fussing with the uh, materials for the for the ground plane and the wall and the radiator. It all works just fine. As you can see, I should have put up the the plane for the radio just a little bit for the radiator, but you know it looks really awesome and and um, it should have yeah it should have been moved up a little bit because now it's down too much. But you know, this looks really nice. If this, if we would have made some more work on the chair, make it more realistic and a bit worn out, um, nobody would notice that the chair wasn't in there. So that's um, a big plus for New Tech, hooray! All right, well that's it. So I hope you uh, it shines, shines some more light, light on the um, Shadowcaster. Uh, that's a good catch, isn't it? Shadowcaster uh, a node. Um, um, note that we have now and just a little bit more than what the manual is telling you so as, uh, go ahead and and uh, start creating some great compositing there all right see you in the next videos bye bye